Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. So good to be here with you today to share God's word with you once again in our weekly devotion. I pray that uh, you come ready to uh, receive something from the Lord. Um, just before I, I begin, I want to uh, encourage you uh, to go ahead and, and like and 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 uh, drop us a note, uh, a note, and and let us know how you are blessed by this devotion. And uh, also, would like you to go ahead and share this devotion with someone that you know can help, can be can be helped by this, or or can find a, a word of encouragement and whatever that God is laying in my heart to share with you today. All right, let's open our Bible this morning in Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 and 12. All right, and it reads, The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That's the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 and 12. The way to achieve true greatness. In our reading this morning, Jesus delivers a powerful message that challenges our conventional understanding of greatness. He teaches us that true greatness in the kingdom of God is not achieved through power, status, self-promotion, but through humility and service. Matthew 23, 11 and 12 is a challenge is a challenge and an invitation. It says whoever exalts himself will be humble and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Some say that this verse is a proverb that means those who seek prestige will find shame and those who seek humility will find honor. It's a reminder that God works to humble those who try to exalt themselves. Others say that this verse means that if we promote our own greatness by way of worldly boasts, we will end up ashamed when Christ appears and inaugurates his kingdom. The path to becoming exalted with glory and greatness is through self-humility. It is also said that Jesus' view of being our, our best is quite the opposite. See, he expects us to be humble and serve others. We are not to cut corners, bend rules, or trample over others. Jesus taught his disciples how to become the greatest among you through his words and actions he lived this with this with his actions may we too follow his great example instead of lording of our position of authority over other people as the world promotes may we live true greatness by serving them the Jewish teachers and religious of, uh, leaders of Jesus' day, the scribes and Pharisees, exhibit many undesirable traits. Chief among, men, uh, among them were pride and, and, and hypocrisy. In Matthew 23, if you go ahead and, and read from the beginning from verse 1, Jesus warns his followers not to imitate their despicable behavior, concluding with these words, the greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. According to this paradoxical principles of God's kingdom, the greatest person is the one willing to stoop to the lowest place and serve others. The Pharisees try to prove their worth by, by lifting themselves above everyone else, but the Lord's faithful servants don't need to exalt themselves. They have nothing to prove. Instead, they humble themselves before God and are willing with His grace, trusting that God God will exalt them if they humble themselves. God commands his people to walk humbly with our God. That, that's in the Old Testament. Well, we'll find it in so many different places. In, in the New Testament, it says to be completely humble through uh, Paul and, and James. The Lord declares, I will bless those who, are, who have humble and contrite hearts, who tremble at at my words in Isaiah, the Beatitudes echo with reminders that God exalts 
the humble. Godly leadership, brothers and sisters, is always marked by humility. Peter taught, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. The Bible consistently characterizes people deserving of high position as those with an attitude and of an assuming servanthood in, in, in many places in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus Christ gave us the supreme example of humble, obedient submission to the Father. In Philippians 2, verse 6 to 11, it says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him, hallelujah, the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth in under the earth and every tongue declares that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father see god the son humbled himself and became a human he selflessly served others ultimately sacrificed his life to save each and every one of us and god exalted him to the highest place of honor just as pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall humility brothers and sisters comes before honor the proud are, are brought low but god exalts the humble true greatness in the eyes of god is letting ourselves become less and less and and god become more greater and greater it means becoming like jesus who stooped down to wash his disciples feet god will surely humble us if we'll try to exalt ourselves as the scribe and pharisees but if we voluntarily humble ourselves by avoiding the limelight and serving others god will exalt us in his time this passage from the Gospel of Matthew highlights a fundamental principle of Christian discipleship. The way to true greatness in the kingdom of God is through humility and service. Let's just break down the, the, this verse and, and, and see how we can apply it to our lives today. The, the greatest among you will be your servant. See, Jesus overturned the world understanding of greatness. In the eyes of the world, greatness often involves power, prestige, and authority. However, in God's kingdom, true greatness is measured by service to others. Jesus, the perfect example of humility and servanthood, demonstrated this through his life. He washed the feet of his disciples and ultimately sacrificed himself for the salvation of humanity. As followers of Christ, we are called to imitate his example by serving others selflessly without seeking recognition or reward. This involves putting the needs of others above our own desires and serving with humility and compassion. The second part of what we read this morning says, for those who exalt themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves, humble with themselves will be exalted. See, this statement reflects the a divine principle of justice and reversal. Those who arrogantly exalt themselves will ultimately be humble as their pride blinds them to their own shortcomings and separate, se separates them from God's grace on the other hand, those who humble themselves before God and others will be exalted. Humility opens the door to God's blessing and enable us to receive his grace more fully. When we acknowledge our dependence on God and submit ourselves to his will, he lifts us up in his 
perfect timing and according to his purpose. Jesus warns us against the danger of pride and self-exaltation. He states that those who exalt themselves will be humble. Pride blinds us for, to our own faults and separates us from God's grace. It leads us to arrogance and self-centeredness, hindering our ability to truly serve others. On the other hand, my brothers, humility opens the door to God's blessings. When you, we humble ourselves, before God and others, we invite his grace into our lives and experience true spiritual gr gr growth and true spiritual greatness. The promise of exaltation here is Jesus assuring us that those who humble themselves will be exalted. This does not necessarily mean earthly recognition or success, but rather spiritual elevation in the eyes of God. God honors humility and selflessness. He lifts the humble and bestows upon them his favor and blessing. True greatness, my friends, according to God's standards, is found in a life to, of humble service and obedience to his will. As we continue to meditate on Matthew 23, 11 to, and 12 today, let us ask ourselves this question. What is our definition of greatness? Are, are we seeking recognition and status in the eyes of the world or are we striving to serve others with humility and love? Let us follow the example of Jesus Christ who humbled himself and became a servant for our sake. May we embrace the path and, uh, of servanthood and humility, knowing that true greatness is found in following the footstep of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In, in our daily lives, let these verses challenge us, challenge us to examine our motives and attitude. Do we seek recognition and status or are we willing to serve others with humility and love? Are we willing to prioritize the needs of others above our own desires? True greatness, my friends, in the kingdom of God is not achieved through self-promotion or pride, but through sacrificial love and humble service. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to follow the example of your son, Jesus Christ, today, who came to be served, to, not to be served, but to serve. Grant us, O oh God, the humility to put the needs of others before our own and the strength to serve with love and compassion. Teach us, Lord God, to find true greatness in serving you and in our neighbors, Lord God. May we humbly walk in the footstep of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Be with us today, Lord God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So good that you were able to uh, sit and, 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 and listen to this devotion. I pray that you will bless and encourage and, and strengthen in your walk with the Lord as you uh, join me every week. I pray that you will share this devotion with someone that you know could use an encouragement today. May God be with you. May God bless you and keep you. May God watch over you. May he give you peace. I love you with the love of the Lord.